And all my Fortune Builders Mastery people, my name is Tim Brooks, and I am also a Fortune Builders Mastery alum. I actually went through the course back in 2010, began wholesaling properties in 2011, found an investor partner, began flipping properties, and ultimately got my real estate license in 2011 for the purpose of listing and selling uh, my first flip that I actually did. So today I just wanted to uh, uh, let you know we're going to be going over a quick question and answer. Uh, a lot of our Fortune Builders Mastery people had submitted questions. Their number one question about getting a real estate license. So I wanted to take the time to answer those questions today and also any questions that uh, anybody else may have also uh, as uh, we go through this Q&A. Uh, so if you have questions right now and you're watching this live or the rebroadcast, I am going to be checking, so I am going to be answering those questions. And also as a bonus, I wanted to cover the number one mistake that real estate investors, new investors that is, make when thinking about getting their license. How they're thinking about it, how they're thinking about what they're going to do with it and make money. Uh, a lot of new investors are just going wrong with the, they're limiting themselves that is, with what are the possibilities of actually having a license. So with that being said, I want to encourage everybody to, uh, to like and share the stream with anyone that you think uh, may be beneficial. And uh, go ahead and comment below too, where's everybody from? I always like to know where everyone's from and uh, uh, who's on there even during the rebroadcast. So we're gonna, with that being said, I want to uh, uh, jump into the Q&A and just to kind of finish up my bio. In 2011, uh, when I got my license uh, from there, I actually saw, wow, it was really easy to sell that one flip and how much money we saved uh, in the flip process itself by listing our own property. Uh, but then I saw it as a way to really uh, uh, make additional money in between flips because there weren't always flips ready to go at that time. So I saw uh, selling real estate uh, because it was so easy the first time as a way to supplement the income I was bringing in uh, doing the flips. And as you can see today, uh, we may, you may hear a little noise around us. We're uh, broadcasting from beautiful Jamaica, so we're here on vacation, but I didn't want to uh, leave out this live stream. That being said, I want to jump into the Q&A uh, for some of our mastery students that submitted questions. And the first one is Daniela Romero. Uh, she wanted to know, how do you decide which broker to put your license with and how do they charge you? Now there are a few different models that brokerages use. There's the old school model where the brokerage charges you 50%. I know Long and Foster I think uses this model. They just charge you 50% of your commissions and that's it. That's a pretty big hit. Then there are other discount brokerages that don't charge you much at all or a per transaction fee, but they also don't provide any training or services either. Um, unfortunately, the law states that we have to have a brokerage and you can't do it yourself unless you are a broker and start your own brokerage. However, that's not always cost effective because you have all the compliance issues and you have to do all the brokerage work and you're better off just uh, going with, with a brokerage, in my opinion, and letting them handle all the legal mumbo jumbo. Uh, then there's the hybrid model, which is uh, I belong to Keller Williams and uh, unabashedly I will say that they are awesome. In fact, Van Merrill was the one to recommend Keller Williams to me way back in, uh, I believe it was 2000. Uh, 11 when I first saw that from, uh, from uh, on Mastery. So uh, they're particularly friendly to investors and the way investors do business. In fact, Gary Keller, uh, the founder of Keller Williams, wrote a couple great books on, on flipping properties too. So they, they get it and they get what we're trying to accomplish as investors. So when deciding which broker to put your license with, I definitely would go research your area and see what brokerages are available. Uh, kind of weigh out what the splits are versus the training that you're going to get. And uh, a lot of the hybrid models like the KW model is, is pretty popular. That's why they're, they're growing as fast as they are. Um, Keith Gillespie, and I hope I didn't butcher that, wanted to know what is the best asset an agency can provide to those who want to invest in real estate? Uh, Keith, to, to, to be honest with you, the, the only asset that brokerages really provide are going to be their training uh, and their models and systems. In the end, it all comes down to you putting the property in the MLS itself and you do the marketing. Uh, some brokerages require that you brand them in all of the marketing. Uh, my brokerage allows me to brand myself, so I like that. Uh, so basically, they're going to be providing you the training on how to get a property listed, priced correctly, 
and then it's going to be up to you to sell it for the most part. Uh, the good news is your mastery training is giving you uh, awesome training and how to price out properties. So that is one of the really cool things coming from mastery, Fortune Builders Mastery, to getting your licenses. You will already be an, egg, uh, an expert with how to find motivated sellers and how to price property to sell. Um, so uh, you're already ahead of the game there. Tiffany Burns wanted to know, should I do it if I'm only going to list my own properties? Meaning, should I get a license if I'm only going to list my own properties? How do I make sure I have my contracts cover the right language, uh, that I'm a realtor, uh, and if her, I'm assuming husband and her are partners, uh, should only one of them get their license for now? And those are all really common questions, so they're, they're really good ones that other people are probably going to have too. Uh, yes, definitely I would say get your license if you're going to list your own properties. You're going to save 25 to 3% right off the top by doing that. And that's, that's actually when I, I, I originally got my license so I could monetize my dead leads. I was pulling in about for every 50 leads that I pulled in from motivated sellers, only one fit my buying criteria to wholesale or to flip. So I had 49 dead leads that weren't making any money. So I got my license to, to basically refer those out to other realtors and get a referral fee. Uh, but then I activated the license when I went to uh, list my first flip. And that was so awesome because you're in control of the deal and you're going to save all that commission. Just one commission alone is probably going to make it worth it to you. But once you learn how easy it is to actually sell real estate by uh, uh, listing it and pricing it correctly, you're probably going to want to do more than just your own property, which is why I would really encourage you to get your license for that reason. Um, so uh, how do I make sure my contracts cover the right language that I'm a realtor? Um, your, your flip contracts, you're gonna, you have to disclose that you have a real estate license. Uh, and also, and this, there are some other questions that ask the same type of thing. Your advertisements also, if you're advertising directly to, uh, say, find motivated sellers, you just have to let them know you have a license, and that's it. Um, so generally, you'll put that in a, a general addendum. You'll put it in a general addendum, basically, with your offers. Once you become a realtor, though, you're going to start using realtor paperwork for the most part that'll have specific disclosures for that in there also, that you as the principal in the deal also have a license. And uh, the last uh, question I believe was, if you have a partner or a spouse, is it more beneficial for one to be licensed and one not to be licensed? There are two schools of thought on that, and I'm going to kind of run down both of those, because me and my wife are licensed together also. And uh, really the only, the, the the pros of both of you being licensed are you can both go show properties, you can handle the phone calls and do all of the stuff you need to selling your own property or others. The other good thing is let's say you list some other properties, uh, your spouse can do the showings while you go do the listings or you can split up the duties. Um, so it can be a very good thing. It's like two for the price of one. The con that people run into, and I actually ran into this problem myself, is in disclosing. Once you get a real estate license, you have to disclose a lot more things. Basically, you, you have to disclose that you have a license. You have to, you can't openly take advantage of the other, uh, let's say the seller, whoever you're buying the house from. You can get a great deal from them. You just have to kind of disclose things a little bit more. However, uh, that makes a lot of, say, new investors nervous. And I remember feeling kind of nervous too the first time I had to do that. I never once had a problem with a motivated seller telling me no when I disclosed everything to them. And I kind of went a little overboard with that. I disclosed uh, how much I wanted to buy the property for, how much I was going to resell it for, that I was going to resell it for a, in the future for a profit, et cetera. And I was really nervous the first time, and I had no problems with that. In fact, it, the, the sellers know what their property is worth. They know what it's worth. They know it's a piece of crap and what it's worth. Um, you letting them know that you know what it's worth too and are open about the transaction just builds trust with the seller. So disclosure is the only thing if, if, if you both have your license. You can never go wrong disclosing things. People tend to get jammed up when they don't disclose stuff, whether they have a license or not. But when you're completely open and transparent about it, it builds trust with the seller and is, is uh, the right thing to do. So really good question there. Okay, Deb Kuhn wants to know, are the licensing requirements different in each state? How much does it cost for the training and to take the exam? Yes, the licensing requirements are different from state to state. 
However, there are a lot of states that have something called reciprocity between them, meaning if you have a license in one state, other states will recognize that and allow you to be licensed in their state too. Uh, some require that you take just their state portion of the exam. When getting your real estate license, there are two portions to the exam, a national portion and a state portion. The national portion is the same across all, uh, all 50 states. It's just the state portion that varies from state to state based on their state laws being a little bit different. So even if you got your license in one state and go to another and it's, it's not the same, uh, generally you just have to study their state portion and take the exam. It's not a problem. Uh, generally, uh, the licensing uh, class costs about $250, and I believe the exam, at least in my state of Maryland, was like $25 a piece, uh, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. Maybe even all the way up to, to $75, I'm not sure. But it's, it's uh, fairly inexpensive, though. Uh, Jenny Lee wants to know, can you list your own flips? Also, if you are already working with an agent and go for your license, is it potentially offensive to the agent that you're working for? Um, okay, let's start with uh, the first question. Can you list your own flips? Absolutely, you can list your own flips. In fact, that's one of the real benefits early on as an investor to getting your license is you're saving the 3% that you would be paying another uh, listing agent to list your property for. Also, you're in control of that listing. You're in control of the photos, the uh, um, comments section, and nobody is going to quite care about your property other than you, uh, or as much as you. So yeah, it's, um, you definitely can list your own flips. Uh, also, if you've been working with an agent for a while, they absolutely should not be offended that you also were so inspired by their awesome work in this cool industry that you are inspired to get your own license too. Um, I, have, I have encouraged many of my former clients to go get their licenses. It changed my life so dramatically. There were two things that changed the trajectory of my life. Fortune Builders uh, originally and then Fortune Builders Mastery was a major shift in thinking and changed my trajectory. And then getting my license just boosted that from, from that change in thinking. Uh, so. Whatever agent you're working for should encourage you to do so, I would imagine. If, 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 if you picked a good agent, and if you're in Fortune Builders Mastery, chances are your judgment's good, so you probably did pick a good agent who won't care. All right, so Kevin Rabino Lord says, uh, I'm a couple of days away from taking my on online course exam, and then hopefully a week or two from taking the state exam for my real estate agent license. I'm having anxiety over how much information it is to digest and eventually having to use uh, that same information in the transactions. Well, I have news for you that uh, um, you know, some people pass, some don't. It's okay if you fail the first time. If, uh, when you do, if you do fail, they'll tell you what sections you need to go study and just go read those more completely. Uh, but that exam is normal. Once you, uh, once you get through it, though, it's okay. The good news is 95% of that information that you needed to learn to pass the exam, you will never need to know again, ever. Maybe stuff on agency and a few disclosures, but that's it. Learning how to use meets and bounds and, and baselines and whatever, I don't know. You'll never need to know that again. Uh, but it's the barrier of entry. Uh, one suggestion I would give you, though, is if you're doing the class live, it is not enough. You have to read the uh, you have to read the book also. So go to the class, ask the questions. They probably don't matter. Go read the book and make sure you understand the material in the text because that's where you're going to be tested on that material, not the stuff in the class. In fact, I would actually encourage, and it's probably a question coming up. I would encourage people to do the online course rather than the in-class course. Uh, in my state, it's a 60-hour course that you have to attend live. However, then you have to go home and read the entire text over again because they don't cover the text in its entirety in class. However, if you do the class online, you have to simply read through the text, take a 10-question quiz per chapter to make sure you retain the material, and then you go on to the next section. So you're, you're, you're forced to read the material, and you're, I've just found that uh, our team members on my team who took the online exam had a much higher pass rate. Uh, so your exam, or your, your, your anxiety is normal, it's okay. Uh, even if, if you have to take it more than once, it's okay. 
Okay, Corey Seversky wants to know, do you advertise as a realtor or investor? And that's a good question. Or both. And then, if both, how do you protect yourself when you give low offers to clients? So excited for this. Thanks for doing it. My pleasure, Corey. So, I used to advertise just as an investor, and I actually uh, uh, got in a little hot water one time because I had sent out, I don't know if you're familiar with Yellow Letters or not, if you've gone through Fortune Builders Mastery, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yellow Letters are just a technique to, to send these uh, plain looking, it looks like handwritten letters out to your people. And my Yellow Letters were kind of sent out in batches, and when I first ordered them, and they aren't cheap, uh, I did not have my license yet. And then I got my license, and then they were still being sent out after that, and in those, I didn't disclose that I had a license and uh, got a little warning for that. So that's just one. Uh, 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 so when you're advertising, you're advertising as an investor, but you're just going to put a little thing there that you have a license. The good news is you having the license and you putting it in your investor advertising just makes you look like more of an expert is all, rather than uh, um, like some, some guy that just watched a Carlton Sheets video or something. So... Uh, um, my advertising switched over the years, depending on the market, uh, from investor to realtor, uh, and then back again. But one of the secrets that, that I really want to share with you is that in, uh, advertising for motivated sellers as an investor is a secret source of awesome leads that you can list as a realtor. Because again, one out of 50 is good enough for your buying criteria, probably but they make perfectly good listings. They just don't have enough equity or whatever, right? But you can list those properties and still make a 3% commission on those. So uh, I guess if I had to choose, I probably would advertise as an investor because you're killing two birds with one stone. Um, or go for both, it's up to you. Uh, either way though, you won't go wrong. Uh, Candace Dodson wanted to know, she says, I want to get my license in Illinois where I live and currently rehab, as well as Indiana, where I plan to start rehabbing soon. Is it necessary to take classes in both states to test for both states, or is there a national test? Uh, okay, so we covered that a little bit earlier in a previous question, and again, take it where you're rehabbing right now first, uh, and then usually you're only gonna have to do the state portion or take the state exam uh, in the new state. So, uh, but you won't have to do the national most likely in those two states. So you should be good to go to, to get both and it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you will have to do continuing ed classes generally in both states, uh, which uh, I'm required in Maryland at least to do 15 hours of continuing education every two years. So uh, that's just one thing if you have multiple licenses in multiple states is just the continuing ed every two years in each state. Uh, Terry Thorpe uh, said, asks, is it cost effective to get your license just to find and list your own properties? What kind of minimum extent expenses would be incurred? Okay, there's two parts to that question, and we, we've already kind of talked about one of them where it is cost effective to list your own properties. Uh, a little pet peeve of mine, new investors, and I'm going to cover this. This was kind of the secret I wanted to share with everyone where our thinking is a little off. A lot of investors think that they want to get licensed so they can have MLS access to find deals in the MLS. Some people find deals in the MLS. My personal belief is once a deal hits the MLS and is listed by a realtor and everyone has access to it, I've never really considered those much of deals. And they're generally pretty skinny and everyone's got access to that deal. Uh, MLS, you can, get the same, you can find the same stuff off of Zillow or whatever. Um, it's hard to find a realtor who's going to let you get the kind of deal that you need to really make that a good flip. And I'm talking about 70% minus repair costs, you know, off of the ARV. That gets tough unless you're dealing directly with the seller. And that was one of the, the key things I learned uh, through Fortune Builders was how to find motivated sellers directly. That's where the deals are. Um, one other little secret, you do not need to get licensed to get MLS access. Most MLS systems, and each region kind of has its own MLS, will allow a realtor to have an unlicensed administrative person or something like that that can have MLS access also to help that realtor. Uh, when I first got my license, I had a guy who was a real estate investor who was so excited to have MLS access, 
So I had him as my admin having MLS access and he paid for my MLS too. So if you really have your heart set on getting the MLS and all that, you don't need to bother getting licensed and all that. Just go find a cool realtor, uh, pay for that, their MLS access and have them put you on there as their admin where you get MLS access too. You don't have to be licensed for that. Most MLSs will accommodate for that. Uh, it's a little secret for you there. Uh, but you're generally going to have to pay for their MLS too, which is, mine's like 170 bucks a quarter or something like that. So you'll probably pay that and for your own as well. Uh, if you really insist, there, there's no real secrets in the MLS though, if I could just share that with you. It's not, everyone thinks it's like real secret info that, that you can search for and all of that. It's, it's the same stuff. There's so many, so many sites now that give you MLS info, realtor.com, et cetera, that I'm not sure of the benefit other than maybe searching by some keywords or something. But again, once it's in the MLS, it's like the stock tip that was printed in the Wall Street Journal on the front page. Everyone's got it. It's not that much of a deal. Okay, so uh, that's just my two cents. I could be wrong. Laura Stovall wanted to know, I'd like to know all aspects of getting a real estate license. I was personally considering it to be able to access the MLS, which we just talked about, uh, for networking and to save on commissions, which we talked about that too. That is a good idea. Uh, as well as sell my own properties. After reading all the comments, I didn't realize you had to fall under a broker and the fees associated with that. Any info you can provide is much appreciated. I'm in Georgia, by the way. Uh, well, thank you, Laura. Um, having your real estate license generally costs about, you, ha you have generally, say, the National Association of Realtors, your state board and local board. Where I live, that's about $700 a year plus the brokerage fees like 60 bucks a month or something like that and it adds up to yeah, maybe $1,200 a year. So weigh that against what you're actually doing with the license. What I really want to stress is when you get your license, don't just think of your license in terms of I'm an investor and I have a license. Think of it in terms of I have a license, what can I do with this while I'm investing too so that one feeds the other. Remember. When you're looking for your wholesale deals or doing your investor advertising, remember 49 out of 50 of those make perfectly good listings that can sustain you while you're in between flips or wholesale deals. Also, you're building up that big stockpile of cash so that you can then begin flipping properties by yourself without a hard money lender, etc. When I first started with Fortune Builders, I had to get really good at negotiating and putting properties under contract as a wholesaler. I had no money whatsoever and in fact, I put my mastery tuition on two credit cards and that was it, I was done. So I saw the real estate license as a way to kind of supplement my wholesaling that I was doing and just kind of built that up over that first year and it was awesome. And it really put my investor stuff in turbo drive because I wasn't just relying on uh, investor wholesale deals at the time, I could do regular real estate deals in between and it just made everything so much better. Uh, and your, your mastery training, like I said, is going to make you probably in the top 1% of realtors out there just from your mastery training alone. Okay. Uh, Anis Rodriguez, hope I didn't butcher that, wants to know, do you recommend that all business partners get their real estate licenses? Uh, that's up to you. Remember, we went over the pros and cons of having a license. I probably would prefer that they did just because I, I want my business partners being experts. I want them knowing everything there is to know so that there's no surprises. Um, most of the real estate class to get your license is just training on how not to get in trouble. It, it, they don't train you on how to do real estate, just how not to get in trouble. So it's not bad for everyone to, to have a license and know, know the do's and don'ts. John Lee wants to know, can you clarify when should an investor with real estate license charge or not charge commission in various scenarios? And wouldn't the broker you work for expect his or her share of the commission in most of your transactions? Thanks. Very good question. And l let's say, for example, in my brokerage, they expect that when you first are a new licensee there, that you have to do four transactions before they'll give you the freebie, right? However, my very first transaction I did was my freebie. It was my own flip. So in that case there, what they did, because they, I think they charged like 30% of the commission was their split uh, under a certain volume. After, after I do like $3 million in volume a year, I get to keep 100% at KW. Uh, however, in this case here, I gave them what the 30% portion would have been for them, and then the rest of it I just didn't charge a commission to myself or anything. 
So uh, most will be very flexible with you and, and work out just whatever their little cut would be, and it's not much. Uh, and that's only if it's your very first deal. If you've already done, say, a few transactions, they'll give you the freebies. I can't speak for all brokerages, but at least uh, uh, at KW, that was the policy. Uh, let's see. John Lee, can you clarify when should an investor with a real estate license? Okay, we, we went over that. Um, Sharon Kaiser uh, wants to know, please break down A, the initial cost to get licensed or, and affiliated with a broker. Uh, generally, Sharon, that's going to be about 1500 when it's all said and done. Now, your area may be different. Now, that's going to cover the, the licensing exam, the uh, uh, joining your board, the national board, like the National Association of Realtors, State Board, Local Board, uh, joining those, your initial startup with your brokerage, your business cards, etc., and also your MLS. Um, your regional MLS probably charges a little bit of a startup fee, like 250 or something, and then whatever that quarter's fees are. So all, when it's all said and done, it comes to about 1500 in my area. Um, and that was actually one of the things when I got my license, again, I was only planning on referring out dead leads. That's what actually made me kind of hustle uh, was because I'm like, wow, I just shelled out $1,500. I want to do as much as I can as quickly as possible to get a return on that money. And it, it, Fortune Builders kind of got me in that mindset. And uh, then it, it really just took off for me because I wanted to recoup that initial $1,500. Uh, okay, and B, ongoing annual cost for license renewal and required training. Uh, so the trainings every two years for your license and uh, uh, you're continuing it, I think it's probably going to be around $150 to $200. Uh, and the state board where I live is about $700 annually. Again, though, I don't want you thinking in terms of just using this license for, for your flip specifically, I want you to think of it in terms of augmenting what you're doing with your investing and just doing regular sales at the same time and letting the two feed each other like a big circle. That's really when it becomes powerful. And uh, I always call that, I, I used to be in the Marines, so I think in military terms, I consider it what they call a force multiplier. Uh, fortune builders plus license, two plus two does not equal four, it equals seven in this case. So I want you to think of it in those terms. Uh, so the expenses are really going to be just, say, an investment that you're going to get a return on. Rather than a cost, it's a cash outlay. Uh, Raphael uh, wants to know also, uh, how do you monetize your leads from being an investor into an agent lead or vice versa? Good question. And what does uh, that conversation sound like? I wonder what credibility packets do you show or do you show presentations for either uh, as an agent uh, investor? And that's awesome that you're using those credibility packets, the Fortune Builders ones. I used them and they were awesome. So I hope that you're all, you all went in there and went through and filled out your credibility packets because they really do help. And, and they separate. there's a lot of people out there trying to be real estate investors and that separates you from the other guys because you just look like you know what you're doing. Um, what I started doing though was, uh, and I'm glad you brought up what does the conversation sound like because conversations and scripts are so important to, to everything going forward. It's about knowing what to say, uh, having enough people to say it to, and are you saying it to enough people? That's all what it comes down to. So I, I kind of gave them a choice is, is how my conversation evolved into. And I would say, okay, I want to talk to you. I'm, I have a real estate license. I am an investor. So I'm going to kind of change hats with you and give you the pros and cons of, of the benefits of each one of those scenarios. And then I would give them the benefits of me buying their property as an investor, and then I would give them the benefits of just listing their property and putting it in the MLS and asking them which one fits your scenario the most. And generally, if they're in a hurry and all of the things that cause a motivated seller to be motivated, that uh, um, they're going to go if they want to sell the property quickly, they're going to go with you as an investor. And uh, if, they, uh, if, if they want to wait a while and they're never going to give you the kind of deal you need anyway, list it as a uh, real estate agent. So um, I hope that answers your question, Raphael. And I just had a, a couple other questions, too, that came up that I wanted to, uh, to share with you. Let's see. This one came in last night. And I really do appreciate the questions, guys. And what I'm going to do... I'm going to go through these. Uh, I'm going to go through these further too, and we're going to do another Q and A. I'm going to go through what other questions kind of came in. I can't see right now, 
what questions are coming in. Uh, so someone said, hey Tim, I noticed that you've been speaking about obtaining a real estate license. We've been into Fortune Builders for 16 months now. And this is from uh, uh, Jai Rogers. How you doing? Uh, everyone's been telling us that one of us should be licensed. Where do I start? I'd prefer to take the classes in person versus online. Any suggestions? We're in Georgia. So yeah, one or both of you. If, if you're going to get licensed, it's kind of a cool thing for both of you to go through at the same time as a shared experience. And that way you're both going to be able to go show properties and stuff and uh, not just rely on one person's expertise. Uh, and even if you go through the licensing class, you don't have to take the test. Um, now, I kind of gave my opinion on preferring, say, the online course versus the, the classroom course. However, everyone's learning style is different. And I hear a lot of people say, oh, I prefer the classroom so I can ask questions and stuff like that. The only problem with that is asking all those questions doesn't matter because none of that's on the test. It's all what's in the text is going to be on the test. So again, if, if you were asking my opinion, I would say I prefer online. And, and the members on my team that we've hired, uh, the ones who have done the online version generally have a higher pass rate. Uh, but try them both and uh, uh, see what you think. If, if, if you don't like one, you can always do the other. And uh, again, another little tip, if you fail the exam, they're going to tell you on there which chapters uh, you missed questions on, because it's all divided up among chapters. So that can be beneficial. So find whichever one you missed the most, ch the most find which chapter you missed the most questions in, and then go back and study and dominate that chapter and go make sure you have a clear understanding of all the concepts and you'll be able to make up the most ground uh, per hour of studying if you use that method. So, well, that's, what I've, that's all I've got for this session here. Again, uh, uh, like and share if you thought it was beneficial. I'm going to do another q and I wish I could see the questions right now. I'm going to go back and look, and we're going to do another Q&A while I'm here in Jamaica. Uh, Internet's been a little spotty. I've been trying to do this for days and have not been able to get a good connection. And so finally, here we are with good weather. Um, and I'm really curious to go back and look through and see where everybody's from and what new questions uh, you've got. Uh, I'm really excited to find out what people's number one question is in terms of getting licensed, but not just getting licensed, but the career of real estate. Because remember, getting licensed is only the very first part, and then that's over, and then you have a whole real estate career ahead of you. So I'm also interested in hearing what's your number one question about being an agent, having a career in real estate, and specifically how to make that work with your investing career that you've embarked on. Uh, I'm really excited to hear from everyone. You already uh, have shown that you have awesome judgment and that you're awesome students because you're in the right place with Fortune Builders Mastery, and I'm proud to be in this group as well. Uh, so uh, in the next couple of days, we'll do another Q&A and see uh, uh, how many other people we can help with their questions about should I or should I not get licensed, and is this the right thing for you? So again, I'm Tim Brooks, and uh, uh, I'll see you guys uh, in a few days.